All right, guys, so here's what we're doing today. Before the valley of the Kern River Valley heats up to 110 degrees this morning, I got up early because I want to talk about a car that I spent six months hunting for, the Lexus LX570. things that I've learned about it from owning it over the last six months and putting about roughly 10,000 miles on it. It's a 2008 and I bought it uh, online. It got shipped to me from Arizona to Central California here and this car is very unique. You know if I could sum it up it would be like a bougie Jeep um, or Bronco. Uh, just super luxurious very confident when you're driving it. It is a strong vehicle. And the reason I got this thing is my wife is so hard on vehicles. She just hammers cars. So I wanted to find a car that could be hammered, that could just be driven to the ground. And this is what I came up with. Let me know in the comments if you think that this car can do it. I've heard that this car can go over 500,000 miles if you take care of it, maintain it. Um, and so that's why I put my wife in this car and it's also very safe. My family can ride in it. I feel comfortable that, you know, if there ever is an accident, you know, it's kind of like, it's not if, it's when. When do you want them, you know, what do you want them in when it happens? And this is what I want them in. Something that is just gonna take a beating. And my wife, Hammers cars, and so this is the car that I came up with to be hammered. Uh, crazy thing is, this Lexus, you can pick them up for like 20, 25 grand, maybe even lower on the LX570 series. Uh, I feel like they're appreciating in time, you know, slowly. The LX470 is actually going up, the one that was built before 2008. And especially if you get the 2006 or 2007 version, it has the upgraded engine, but it's the old body. Uh, this one has the upgraded engine. Um, these are not depreciating because people are starting to recognize like, okay, what is this car? What does it do? Uh, and it is the, I'm telling you, it's the, uh, the Swiss army knife of vehicles because you can do anything. You want to go four wheeling? You want an SUV? You want safety? You want to tow 9,000 pounds? Go for it. Or 8,700 pounds. Uh, you you can do whatever you want. You have your top rails here that you can hook stuff up to. You could have some kayaks or different adventure stuff up there and you'd be totally fine. And this car will run forever. Now you're gonna pay out of your butt in, in fuel because this thing gets terrible gas mileage. So it's a trade off. What do you want? You know, you want a car that can absolutely do anything you want or do you want, I don't know, more of a specialty car that can do one thing really well. One interesting fact about this vehicle is it's one of a few Toyotas or Lexuses that is actually made in Japan. And if you look at the build on it, it says Japan. So this car uh, was not built anywhere else, built in Japan because of the high standards that it needed to have and shipped over to America. If I could give my impression of driving this car, it's very unique. Uh, I've never flown in a helicopter, but... I always kind of imagine that the helicopter, when it goes, it kind of goes forward and uh, tilts up a little bit. That's how I I feel when I'm driving this. I, I don't know if that does a good job of explaining it, but the the car, it has the automatic height control system. But when you hit certain speeds, it will adjust itself for aerodynamics. So, for example, once you hit 65, it... I think it lowers itself in the back. Uh, it's a weird feeling, um, but as soon as you hit 65, it's pretty sudden. Um, the feeling it gives me is, if you've ever worked out and you've worked out your legs and the next day you're really sore and you really feel like you don't have much like, uh, strength there and you kind of fall back like all of a sudden before your muscles kick in and catch you, kind of like, oh, it does that when you're driving. 
So you'll be cruising down the road, hit 65, and it kind of just falls back. And you're like, whoa, how far are we going back? And then it catches it. So it takes a minute to get used to. Uh, you can't turn that off. It just does that from what I've been reading. Unless somebody else knows, but that's what I've found. Um, the automatic height control does that, and it does create kind of a unique drive. Now, with that, this suspension, I think I've already said, this it's hydraulic. It's not air. It gets really kind of wavy when it's, a, I guess, a little used. If you own this car, from what I've been reading in the forums, is you have to maintain that hydraulic system. And the way you do it is there are bulbs underneath the car here. So I'm looking here at the passenger side, and it's the same thing on the driver's side. You have these bulbs that uh, are part of the hydraulic system. You have to take out this um, protectant bar here. And then you can gain to the rear. And then there's a front up there. You take those out. Uh, you have to bleed the hydraulic system. You take those out. You put new ones in um, because they might be worn out. Uh, they don't last forever. It's something you just have to maintain. These bulbs cost probably about 120 bucks each. And so they're not cheap. And then the hydraulic fluid itself, you can't... Uh, it's hard to find. You got to get them like straight from Japan. In 2008, this car MSRP'd for $85,000. If you do the adjustment for inflation, it was probably over $100,000 in 2008. So it's another one of those gems. I think that when the housing market crashed in 2008, this car was being sold. Uh, but this car lived, surprisingly. The Cadillac XLR, it died because nobody's going to spend $103,000 on a two-door coupe. But this car actually survived, and it kept being sold um, all the way up until now. It's being sold in 2023. Uh, this thing is the Lexus version of the Toyota Land Cruiser, but it's got a couple of features and knickknacks that the, make it unique to the Lexus. So let's start under the hood. Whoa, I can't see anything. And that is because this thing comes standard with a V8, a 5.7 liter. And it is technically a Hemi. But it's all sealed up. So when you open the hood of a Lexus LX, it's like, oh, okay. Definitely kind of showy and bougie. Um, similar to your Cadillacs and whatnot. But they have it sealed up so you can't see anything. Uh, you can check the oil down here. You can add your coolant. But if you need to do anything else under the hood, you got to pop these little plastic pieces off and gain access. So, you know, a little unique, but that is under the hood of the Lexus LX. Uh, this thing has um, the V8 that has a close to 400 horsepower. It is a very powerful, smooth um, running engine. This particular one has 150,000 miles on it. I think I've put 10, so maybe 153,000 miles on it. Uh, the transmission on it is a six-speed, and it is very, very much a Lexus transmission. It is buttery smooth. I've heard other people on YouTube say that about that transmission. Totally agree, because I watched all the reviews. I drove one, kind of decided, okay, this is what I'm hunting for. Spent six months looking on the internet and finally found this one, uh, because... It had all the service records. It was a single car owner. Um, it came from a dry state, so I wasn't worried about rust. All right, so also on the front of this car, it has, well, mine broke, and it would be about a $400 fix to fix it. However, I don't know if I want to spend $400 and fix that because it's a camera for the front, and you can use it for when you're parking or at a stoplight. It will throw the camera up and it'll show you in front of the car and then it has another camera here this one does work on the side here of your side mirror it will show you where you're at in the lane um how far you are to maybe like a crosswalk or you can use it for off-roading if you wanted to but it's it's 2008 and so the quality of the camera not so good so i don't know if i want to spend 400 dollars to fix that uh, but i might do it just to keep the car kind of whole um, cause you don't want to just let things go on it cause then it won't be good anymore. Um, 
the headlights does have a cool washer just like the Cadillac. I don't know if that was, uh, you know, only popular on the bougie cars in 2008. It has the adaptive headlights. Um, they turn, but you have to really try to like find that they turn because uh, they don't turn that well, but they do do it. And these headlights, they do bright up or brighten up the road very well. This car also comes with adaptive cruise. Mine doesn't. That was an add-on. But in 2008, this thing did have the ability to have adaptive cruise so that you could cruise down the highway in luxury. A cool thing that Lexus has is this, the ability to put a Lexus. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it is a Lexus battery tender right here in the grill of the car uh, so that I can pull out the cord here oh, there it is and I can plug in and charge the battery if I wanted to and then tuck it in here and nobody would ever notice so that's kind of a cool feature of the LX the tires here they're 20 inch rims and I think they're really nice they're like that polished uh, look I think they look pretty good uh, your side mirrors they're huge when you're in the vehicle you're like oh my gosh that's super huge and then a cool feature is when you lock the car you've got your auto folding side mirrors which is a cool feature because the car it is wide it is a short wheelbase though i know this car looks huge but it is not um, it is like the same profile of a Jeep, a Bronco. It's not some ginormous rig because this is one of the most capable off-road vehicles you can get. So they had to have that in mind. So that's kind of cool. It does have the proximity or auto touch unlock and unlock feature. Looking at the rear of the car. They come standard on the rear bumper with a tow capability. And these things can tow. So on the rear, it does have the standard tow hitch built into the bumper with all your uh, hookups. And on paper, this car, it says it can tow almost 9,000 pounds, which is pretty incredible for a off-roady SUV. Um, it does have LED rear headlights, which was pretty rare in 2008. It does have a backup camera, which is nice. And then here's a cool feature. The rear of the vehicle, I think, is what makes this car so freaking handy. Because I have gotten the name for it. And I don't know if I got it from somebody else or it just popped in my head. But I feel like this car is the Swiss Army Knife of SUVs it can literally do anything so you have a rear tailgate that is auto and in that you have cases where you can put tools uh, you have your jack in here you've got I think a first aid kit so you have some of your tools built into this cool handy dandy tailgate you have this flap that comes down this is how you access the spare if anybody's ever had to do it you put your jack extension in there it will lower your spare tire which is underneath the vehicle but i like this dust flap because nothing falls in the cracks you uh you just i don't know it's pretty cool you have your cargo net and we've thrown so much stuff back here and it is like a truck bed um but these seats they stack up here on the sides and then they're auto fold down so if i want them down well if i want them down i can hit the button i can do one at a time it comes down and then you have to finish the job by pulling the strap up and then the seat comes up it's a little magnet that holds that there turn your headrest up boom you got a jump seat there 
and you can still have this side accessible or you can bring that one down as well pull it up put it here and then in this little cargo net is where i have and i think most people probably will is your third headrest for the back seat um now there's a lot of room back there it's not tiny i mean as an adult i don't know if you'd want to sit back there because the floor is so close to the edge of the seat that it isn't a little annoying but you do have uh you know your cup holders um you've got vents back there for the ac uh, which makes, I think, this car pretty dang unique in 2008. So, if you want to bring your seats down, you can push these buttons. Doesn't that look cool? And then they go in and click in, and then they're pretty secure. So now in 2008, this was the first run of the current generation of the LX. And this thing ran for like 13 years. In 2008, it was the first build. I think they updated or changed it now in like 2022. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, before 2008, the LX 470, you could remove these seats, giving you more access here. But these seats, they're locked in because of the the auto feature and just the way they built it now it has to sit above the side wall here so that's why it kind of takes up a lot of space on the side but it's you know you've got all this space to load stuff in it you know we came up here to the lake and we put the dog back here made a little bed for him stacked all our stuff on one side secured it and it was really nice but you can do this in so many different figurations that's why i call it the swiss army knife um you, and you can throw things back here with a, you know, throw down a rubber mat and you can just throw stuff down here. Uh, your, your plastics don't allow stuff to go in the crevices. I mean, it's, it's, they've kind of thought of some things that you wouldn't really think about that you've even seen on modern cars. Now to get back to that third row, you come over here to the side, we'll fold all the way up. And then you can secure it and then take this strap, secure it to your sidebar here. And then this prevents it from going back down. But that's if you're traveling and you want this thing up and you need this more cargo space. Um, but you would just pull that lever. This thing would go up. These are also electric to move back and forth um, in the middle seat. These seats are heated which is pretty wild, but that's how you gain access to the back here. And you got your steps here. They even put you a cool step right here. You know, most cars, they just put you a step on the outside and then you gotta turn into a gymnast to get back there. But no, they built you a step. So it is kind of nice to enter into the rear of the... And that's what it looks like with the seats. So you have about that much space. And then you can also recline uh, those seats and then you got your storage cubbies here uh, very nice very bougie all right so with the middle seat locked in you can see that you got your child um, car seat lock in here or hook but one thing that i think is so unique lexus didn't just put the hook on the back of the seat no they put a little plastic piece that clicks in and it has such like a nice little click and that is the theme for this car um as i go through it uh, I'm probably skipping things, but there's so much just bouginess that has put it into a lot of the details. So it does have a middle armrest here. You push the button and up comes your little storage locker here for the middle row. And they've got some space. You've got your remote control for the TV that comes down right here when the car is running. If you want it, you can click the button. It'll come down. You do have your fancy dancy cup holders here. What else do we have back here? As we climb into the middle seat. So as we look here at the middle, um, you have got your TV controls. So you can hook up, if you didn't want to use your remote, you can hook up your different audios. Um, it comes with headsets that you can hook up to the TV. So if you wanted passengers, 
to listen to your TV, or if they wanted to, they could do it um, or not, um, that sync up with your system. But you do have the rear controls, and here's the uh, the heated seats in the rear. You got your high and your low. You can control the temperature here. So this is not a dual zone climate SUV. It's a four zone. And remember, this thing is from 2008. So four zones in 2008, pretty handy. One thing I always like to highlight in the door is just the leather, the premiumness of this leather. Uh, it is very nice. And when you sit in it, you've got such a nice view out it. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, but a lot of SUVs, it's real boxy and you can't really see out, but this thing has such great visibility from just riding in this vehicle. Now, my windows are not tinted. It's this stock tint. I didn't want to change that. Um, the jury's still out on that if I'm going to, but I kind of like the look where you can see in the car a little bit, uh, but you really get kind of like a royalty feeling by sitting here in this cockpit or uh, this middle seat. Um, and the leather, the quality of it, when you touch it, you feel it. You're like, whoa, this car ain't normal. And so whenever I'm driving somebody, I won't really say much because it doesn't look like some crazy SUV. It doesn't look like it was over $100,000. But when you sit in it, you're somebody. I've had several people ask me, what is this car? And then I tell them it's a Lexus LX. And they're like, what is that? Uh, and I try to describe it, starts a conversation. And I start with, well, it's the upscale model of the Toyota Land Cruiser. And if you don't know what those are, it's the same thing. Super cool, super bougie, um, very fancy, but it doesn't have come some of the Lexus features. It's more built for purpose on the off-road. Let's get up here in the front seat and see what this thing looks like. And again, this door, this quality of this leather is so beautiful. You've got actual wood in here. Now, downside. I'm an optimist, but downside is sometimes you're driving and they went so bougie with this leather or this wood, the sun will hit it and actually blind you. I mean, it is when you're sitting here like, oh my gosh, like you'll have to just throw like something over this to drape and cover because it blinds you when it reflects and hits you at that right angle. You've got a huge sunroof here. When this thing comes open, it is ginormous, very big. And cool features with the sunroof. Uh, when you're cruising and you open this thing, it is whisper quiet. Uh, I mean, you'll hear it, but you notice how quiet it is cruising at 70, 80. You've got your SOS buttons, your Lexus link, your push to talks. Um, you've got your different controls of your lights that you want on in the vehicle. You've got your sunglass holder. And I don't know if you guys notice like how fancy that is when you push that down. And this is all felt. So... You'll notice more as you dig into the car. It's not going to show up on camera. You'll see, whoa, they really put a lot of time and detail into this thing. All right, let's get in the cockpit of this thing. Couple things. It's got three zones or three presets for your seats. I'm number two, so I'm going to push number two. My wife's number one. And it puts it in the right place. One thing that Lexus has done for a long time is they move the steering wheel up whenever you open the car and you want to get in, or when you turn it off, it sets it so it's up so you can easily slide into this thing. Now, when I got this thing, I had no idea how many buttons this thing was going to have. I took, I still am remembering all the buttons that come on this car. So let's start left to right. Here, you have your washer of your headlights, but this only works when your headlights are on, um, is when it will wash it. It won't do it unless your headlights are on. You have your adjustable mirrors here. You have your button that tells you if you want your side mirrors to fold in whenever you lock the car, if you want it to be on auto or not. I do have it on. You have your AC uh, hookup in the back. You can turn that on or off. This button is looks like a person kind of coming out of a car or, yeah. So, you click this one on, and what happens is the car will lower itself to the lowest hydraulic suspension level so that it makes getting in and out of the car much easier. And it will do it every time you come to a stop, 
put it in park and turn it off, it will lower you abruptly. Uh, I mean, not like jolt you. It just, it does it really quick. So you, if you're in a hurry, just give it a second and it will lower itself. Uh, what is AFS? The AFS button is your automatic front uh, light system so that if you turn that on or off, it will allow your headlights to swivel. And then here's where you can turn on the tailgate. And then coming over to this beautiful set of buttons down here, you have to have your power door off button. Um, and my problem is when I put my knee in here, I always hit that button. So then I'm like, okay, well, I want to open the tailgate. Uh, and I end up just having to do it manually because I've either hit my knee on that. But this should open. So on the rear here, when you want to close your tailgate feature, I realized what that button wasn't working for me, is you do have to manually pull this thing up. Um, it's You open it like here, and then it's powered, and it will go down softly with its shock. But you do have to close that. And then... You can close, what? And then you can close your tailgate. There we go. Hey, I know, but fancy 2008. All right, let's get back in the cockpit here. I love this car because it gives you the future to turn things on or off. So like, I, I guess like you'd want to turn your parking sensors off, yeah? So it gives you that feature. Um, do you want to turn off your tailgate or your uh, your back hatch? Do you want to be able to open that, you know, automatically? No. So it just gives you a couple features where you can just, you know, I want to turn it off. You've got your traction control. This thing has a center locking differential, which goes into the four wheel drive system. And that has to do with this banquet of buttons here. It's an all-wheel drive car so it's standard in high four-wheel drive so that's just where your toggle switch it just is but when you want to go to four low you just push this in you'll go to four low and again it has that center locking differential so you really can do some stuff um, when you when you want to it has the uh, hill speed cruise control so if you click this on or off when you're off-roading, it will allow you to set like a crawling speed. You can go slow, middle, high, and it's very slow. But then here is your height adjustable toggle switch. Um, again, if you have your button that allows you to uh, exit the vehicle and it getting lowering itself, and this suspension is a hydraulic system. It's not air. Some people think it's air um no it's hydraulic which is much more reliable and much more unique so you can toggle your car lower or higher depending on what you're doing now it does have presets like you can't it locks you out if you're going over 20 miles an hour it won't let you go to the low setting it'll put you in that normal setting uh, and if you're in the high setting it'll bring you back down to the normal but then once you're going slower speeds you can raise it or lower it the cool thing is if you're off-roading and you want to gain a little bit more height, you can add to this thing, and it raises you up quite a bit. I think it's about six inches between the low and the high, um, and I'll show you in a second of, of how unique that is. Okay, so I have the car set up. It's gonna to go to the high mode, so I toggle it up. As soon as I close the door, because it will not operate like this unless you, or won't go into operation unless you have the door closed. So here we go. I'm gonna close the door, and you can see how long it takes to go from the low to the high. Generally what I've found is it'll do each stage from the rear up and then it will balance it up in the front and then it will do the second stage in the rear and then balance up. And I'll tell you when it's done making noise. There it is, done. So it stopped making noise. It balanced, you know, leveled it up quicker, but it was doing something um, with maybe the acclimators or something. But there you go. That's the high setting. And look at the clearance you have. 
you gain quite a bit. And then looking over here, you have quite a bit of clearance, you can see. All right, so I'm gonna close the door and then it should drop itself. Let's go all the way. Okay, so I have it set up. It'll drop as soon as I close this door because I hit the toggle switch to the low, but it will not activate until you close all doors. So here you go, here's how quick it goes. There. Oh, nope, it's still going. There you go. Now it's at its lowest set. Then you have your suspension modes. You can turn it to sport, middle, and comfort. This matters. When this car is in sport, it's just, it's really athletic. And I mean, this is like a Lexus Jeep or a Ford Bronco, or a, this would be like a Lexus Bronco. It, it gets a little bouncy. Now, when you put it in comfort, it's kind of waves at you on the suspension. That is kind of an issue because that suspension gets a little wavy and the kids who are in the back don't benefit from that. So sometimes I like to just put it in the normal mode, but I do have a fix coming that I think will fix this uh, and take the wave out of it. This button here is your, if you're towing, you click it, it'll give you your power and then you can pull. Um, your ECT is kind of your normal, but then let's say you're on an icy road and you want to start in second, you toggle that down and it would start the car in second gear if you're at a stop so that you don't spin. But again, this is an all wheel drive car, so it's constantly in four wheel drive. You have heated and cooled seats in the front. You have the ability to load uh, movies that you could play in the rear. Uh, you have tons of buttons here. Um, you've got your climate control. You've got your uh, vent um, stuff. This is one unique button here where you can change so that the, the air, instead of just being uh, air conditioned, it's actually being vented before it gets to you kind of unique um your screen it's old but it's good i mean it shows you kind of what you need to know um but most of the controls here are buttonish which uh is good and bad because when you're driving down the road and you're like oh i want to change the the uh i don't know the radio station okay <laughs> then you look down and you're like okay like there's a lot of stuff here <laughs> so that's fun the center, it's a deep one. Um, you know, you can put your movies and stuff in here for the movie player. But I love this, that it's individual. So if I like to ride with my armrest here, I can. But if my wife likes it further back, she can put it wherever she wants. Or she can put it up. Or you can grab them both and just move them both back. All right, let's start this bad boy up. I'm going to give you what a cold start looks like or sounds like. All right, another cool thing about this car is your e-brake, it's a lever. I love that. You know, instead of a little switch you have to hit. I mean, this was built for off-roading. So you, uh, if you ever needed to, I mean, you could use it to help control you, but it just gives you that little more control. And it's just really easy to pull. And your e-brake is right there. It's kind of tucked away, out of the way. You wouldn't even really notice it unless you were looking for it. So that's the Lexus LX570. Um, if you guys have any questions or, uh, things I missed, you know, comment, let me know if you have any, uh, thoughts on what you like, or if you've ever owned one, let me know. I uh, I'm following along with the rest of you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, make sure and like, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.